Our film begins with a bizarre text which reads, When I die, bury me deep, lay two speakers at my feet, wrap some speakers around my head, and rock and roll me when I'm dead. Pretty good poem, huh? I wish somebody did that to me when I die, huh? Anyways, near the shadowy mountains, we see the recovering alcoholic Red Miller living a solitary life with his girlfriend. I don't think you can call it solitary if he has a girlfriend, but they're pretty secluded. And his girlfriend slash artist and author Mandy Bloom has a bunch of jobs that she does. She's a very multifunctional person. And while Red works as a logger, she has a day job as a gas station cashier. And they spend most of their time together, although Mandy enjoys immersing herself in fantasy fiction and science novels. And next we see a scene with lumberjack Red Miller working in the forest before leaving in a helicopter. He then turns to his wife Mandy, sketching predatory animals and smoking marijuana. Red returns home to Mandy as they talk about some planets and stars, as well as the Marvel character Galactus, who eats planets. So anyways, Mandy and Red are then shown in a montage that shows them in a beautiful lake on a boat. And they look at each other, and they have this look, as if they know that something horrible is about to happen. Mandy then wanders into the woods and she sees the carcass of a fawn, and later on, Red suggests that they leave this area, which is pretty much the same thing I'd suggest if I saw the carcass of a fawn. And after Red suggested that, Mandy starts talking about a time when she was younger and when she was almost peer pressured into killing a starling by her own father. And upon reading a dark fantasy novel, Mandy begins to fear that something evil will happen to her. And on her way to work one day, Mandy walks past a van carrying the children of the New Dawn, a religious cult led by Jeremiah Sand. Why do cult leaders always have biblical names? What is up with that? So she passes by his truck, right? And he starts looking at her all weird, like looking at somebody you want to like do stuff to. I'm talking like hanky panky kind of stuff. So later that evening, the cult leader, Jeremiah Sands, talks to one of the members and her name is Mother Marilyn. Apparently, Jeremiah has become obsessed with Mandy with just one interaction. He just saw her. He didn't even talk to her, but he's become obsessed. And he tells his acolytes that he needs her. And after scolding Mother Marilyn, he tells her to go fetch Brother Swan. And Jeremiah orders him to kidnap Mandy with the help of the Black Skulls, a cannibalistic demonic biker gang who regularly use a lot of LSD. They're like a demonic cult that you summon using a horn. And this horn is called the Horn of Abraxas. And Jeremiah tells Brother Swan to offer them a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is gonna be Brother Lewis. Apparently this dude is sacrificing his own people just so he can sleep with some cute girl. Wow. Anyways, that very same night, Brother Swan drives out to the lake and he summons the Black Skulls by blowing into the horn thing that I told you about. And then he gives them a jug of LSD and then he sacrifices Brother Lewis, obviously. And then they demand another sacrifice. They say, blood for blood. So after Brother Swan offers them a low ranking member of the cult as a sacrifice, they break into the couple's home and they subdue Mandy and Red. Mandy is then kidnapped by Sam's apostles and Mother Marilyn is amongst the people that kidnapped her. And Marilyn stings Mandy's throat with this wasp soaked in some kind of drug. And now a very delirious Mandy is brought before Jeremiah Sand and the other cult members. And then Jeremiah starts playing a record of music and he was playing the song to try to seduce Mandy. And so as the music plays, Jeremiah starts talking about how he was touched by the light of God and has been granted ultimate wisdom. Mandy experiences some kind of LSD trip. And then he starts telling her that God told him to take anything he wanted. And then he starts disrobing and he exposes himself to Mandy. And she starts laughing hysterically in his face and this really pisses him off. And then he starts touching himself angrily in front of everyone while screaming at the same time. And after the very disturbing image, Jeremiah brings his sister Lucy before Red, and apparently they didn't kill Red, they just captured him and tied him up with barbed wires. And Jeremiah was seeking to demonstrate Lucy's love for him, 
by forcing her to shoot herself in the temple. And Red screams for her to stop, but she ends up pulling the trigger, which was revealed to be empty. And then, Brother Swan comes over and he presents Jeremiah with a blade. And at first, Jeremiah starts comparing himself to Jesus, and then he calls Red a soulless pig, and then he stabs him on the side with a dagger. And then he makes him watch as they drag over Mandy's body in this sack. She's still technically alive. And after they put her in this sack, they hang her upside down, and they burn her alive until her bones turn to ash. Anyways, Red starts screaming in horror, obviously, and he puts himself free from his bonds and he mourns over Mandy's ashes. And a very broken up Red then returns home and he turns to the bottle in agony. And then he watches this weird trailer of Cheddar Goblin. And then he falls asleep and he has this weird animated nightmare before waking up and having an emotional breakdown. And then he goes to the trailer of a friend named Carruthers and he fetches a few weapons to hunt and kill the cult and the demon bikers. And after which, he drives towards the river where the Black Skulls were apparently hiding out and he clashes after the biker gang. He shoots one off his bike with a crossbow before ramming into him with his car, but then his van gets flipped over and he is captured. He falls unconscious from the collision and awakes in the Black Skull lair with one hand chained to a pipe and the other nailed to the floor. And one of the Black Skull guards enters to taunt Red, but he breaks the pipe from its base and whacks him with it before sending him falling down a vent in the floor. And Red then pulls the nail out and he arms himself with a box cutter and some body armor before investigating the place. And then he finds a dead elderly couple, obviously victims of the biker gang. When he walks into the living room, he finds Scratch doing coke and watching something very pervy. And when he goes to attack him, Scratch flips Red over onto the table. When he goes to kill Red, Red slashes his throat and blood starts drenching on his face and Red starts laughing manically like a crazy person. And then he starts doing some coke before the masked black skull re-emerges to shoot at him. But Red snaps his neck getting caught up in the joy of violence. And then he notices a jug of the LSD that the bikers have been using and he takes a small dose and it was just because he was so curious but it was powerful enough to make him see freaky visions. And then he sees a series of bizarre apocalyptic nightmarish scenes before coming to his senses. And after all the madness, he exits the lair and he finds Scabs who taunts Red by saying, she's still burning. And because he said that, Red lights him on fire before chopping his head off. And then we see Red approaching a nearby tower where he meets the chemist who made the LSD which deformed the biker gang. And then the chemist appears to be cooking some kind of other drug for his pet tiger Lizzie who was sitting in her cage. And then when the chemist sees Red, he realizes that the cult was really bad to him. And after the chemist receives some telepathic information, he tells Red to head north to find Jeremiah's lair. And brother Swan and sister Lucy were driving until Swan stopped. And Red catches up with them and he starts beating Swan. But Swan makes the fatal mistake of saying how brightly Mandy burned and Red sticks his axe deep into Swan's mouth and realizing that Lucy is just a puppet of Jeremiah and not really a threat to him, and because she had the least involvement in Mandy's death, he just decides to spare her and she goes off to find the others. And he finally finds Jeremiah's lair and it's apparently some kind of converted satanic church. And there he first spots brother Hanker spit shining his car and Red hurls the axe into his head. And then Red finds a lot of other brothers like brother Clope and the two of them have a duel with the chainsaw and Clope almost wins until Red wraps the chain around Clope's neck and pulls down on it to get it sliced. And then he enters the church with Marilyn attempting to appease Red by telling him that she's an excellent lover who tends to her partner's needs, but Red instead decapitates her and taunts Jeremiah with her severed head. And then Jeremiah first declares that he's protected by God himself and that he cannot be hurt by Red, but then he starts whimpering around and begging Red for mercy. And then Red holds his head really tight he squeezes Jeremiah's head until his eyes pop out and his skull is crushed. And then he drops a lighter and he sets the whole place on fire like a boss. And as Red walks out, he sees a vision of presumably when he first met Mandy at a party. And he enters his car and he drives off, imagining that he's seeing Mandy sitting in the passenger seat, smiling at him. And it is then revealed that Red is in a bizarre bloody state of deformity and reality obviously deformed by his revenge quest and the LSD that he took, and he's actually hallucinating Mandy. 
and as Red drives away, we see an otherworldly landscape appear behind him. Because the revenge that he took has now turned him into something else. And that is how our movie ends, boys and girls. I love you guys so much. Remember to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.